Dear brothers and sisters, Just a note about today's feast. It is a movable feast in the Roman Catholic Church's calendar. It is always celebrated on the third Friday after Pentecost. The purpose of the feast is to honor Jesus and his Sacred Heart. In most Western cultures, the heart is a symbol for love and devotion, so today's readings focus on the love God has for those whom God has called to be in relationship with the Godhead. Our readings focus on the love God has manifested, a, to the Israelites of old, b, the psalmist, c, the new chosen people, and d, the disciples of the Lord Jesus. Our first reading is Moses' reminder to the Israelites that God has chosen them not because of their greatness or importance, but in spite of their smallness and unimportance. God is able to manifest the divine graciousness by choosing an insignificant group of people and bestowing on them love and a desire for a close relationship. God only asks that the chosen people remain faithful to the covenant relationship which God has established with them. This unconditional love for an inconsequential nation is what God is all about. God's love is what makes the people have value. And what is true for the Israelites is true for all people, everywhere and at all times. The psalmist today speaks of the loving kindness, heased, of the Lord God. God pardons iniquities, heals diseases, redeems lives from destruction, crowns individuals with kindness and compassion. God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, rich in kindness. What excellent descriptions of the characteristics of one who loves unconditionally. St. John in his love letter equates God with love. We are to love others because God has first loved us. God is equated with loving God and others. We cannot say we know God if we do not love. If we are godly people, we will be loving people, people who love others. Thus we are called to God our neighbors as ourselves. We are to treat them as God treats us. We are to love them as we are loved. Love is the key characteristic of a divine relationship, not only with God but with others. Jesus, in the Gospel Periscope, prays to God, his Abba Father, praising and thanking God for revealing the knowledge of God to the little ones, and not to the intellectual and sophisticated people. God chooses the simple people because they do not get so caught up in theological discussions but rather experience the essence of God in being loved and in loving. They live a godly, loving, life rather than intellectualizing about God. Jesus invites all those who need rest, refreshment, and love to come to him and learn from him, be disciples of him, for he is meek and humble of heart, he has a loving heart and cares for those who come to him. Jesus' invitation is not complex and difficult to comprehend, come and be in relationship with me and through me with my Abba, through the Holy Spirit, and you will experience love, you will experience God. The pandemic of the last few years, hopefully, has given us time to focus in prayer on our relationship with our loving God and then to reach out, not necessarily in bodily personal contact, to others in a loving way. God is giving us the time to reflect on the divine love that Jesus demonstrated by his life, ministry, death on the cross with blood and water flowing from his sacred heart, and his resurrection to new life. We so often get things all mixed up. What is important is not the theology and philosophy of who God is, but developing an experiential relationship with the God who is love. We were not putting down the need to study the word or teachings of the church, but we were emphasizing the importance of experiencing and living a life of love, a godly life. Yes, discussion and learning more about God can be beneficial. But being loved by God and loving others is what Jesus invites us to do. If our Bible studies and talking about religious issues do not affect how we treat others, then it is not godly. 
What we know and learn should have an impact on how we act. That's why St. John reminds us if we are without love, we have no knowledge of God because God is love. Today as we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we are not focusing on the human organ which pumped sacred blood through the human body of Jesus while he was living here on earth. We are talking about the relationship with Jesus that pumps love through the mystical body of Jesus, the Church, the people of God. We are celebrating the love which God has for us and the love we are called to share with others. Love is as essential to those who are called by God as blood being pumped by the human heart is to the human body. We come together to celebrate the God who is love. We honor Jesus the incarnation of love who poured out all the sacred blood from his sacred heart as a sign of love for us. We praise the Spirit who has been given to us so we can testify to the God who is love. The personal question action for today, what does the heart signify for me? What meaning can I take from the sacred heart of Jesus? What does it say to me about the sacrifices involved in truly loving someone? How can I share my heart with someone so that they can understand the love that flows from the essence of God? Who might benefit from my heart-filled love today, this weekend? Blessed are you, O Lord, ever-loving and lovable. Your very being is the origin and source of all love. You are love, shared equally among yourself as Abba, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have chosen to allow this essential part of yourself to flow out into the world in a creative process. Yet your love was not dimmed nor completed in the mere act of creation. You established a covenant relationship with people who were considered inconsequential in order to manifest your love for them, a love which knows no boundaries. Again and again you gave them more chances to deepen their relationship with you. You knew ahead of time that they would fail to fully respond, but you wanted to manifest the loving gift of free will, so that those who did respond would do so freely and without force. In the fullness of time, your love became incarnate in Jesus, your Son. He came to reveal the true knowledge of who you are, love. He lived a life which proclaims you as love. To those who were weary and finding life difficult Jesus gave the invitation to come and learn from him and experience God as love. He demonstrated the fullness of love by pouring out the last drop of blood from his sacred heart as he died on the cross. Yet, as a fuller sign of love, he came back to life in order to show that love goes beyond death to eternal life. We praise you as love. We thank you for your love. We ask that we may reflect your love by loving and caring for those around us, those little ones whom you have entrusted to our care. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, love incarnate, your Son, co-lover with you in the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen.